All right. All right, and we're live. We are. Yes, we yeah. barely, 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 <laughs> barely live. I got the Monday posted out. I got every. Yeah, you know, I got. But, so uh, it is Monday. It's Monday. It's a holiday. Today's a holiday, right? Like it's. Uh, I, I think it's what Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Yes. yes. Which um, I bear. I didn't even know about, and it was a good thing that someone had mentioned it because I was about to go to the post office today. <laughs> Oops. This is how I find out it's a holiday. Oh wow! Uh huh. I didn't it's realize a, it was okay. Yeah, okay, it's a cool. federal holiday. Yeah, that that's the wow. thing. So, uh, well, so I'm yeah, behind. well, yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Apparently, morning. it is Monday, June twentieth, two thousand and twenty. Allegedly, <laughs> and we are going to uh, play this intro. We'll be yeah. right back. <laughs> Monty Moore. I'm a 30 year comics veteran in comics, games, and movies. And you've been watching one of my absolute favorite podcasts, Catch the Craze. You are watching Catch the Craze. What am I listening to? And you're listening to Catch the Craze. Where are all the indies at? A Catch the Craze podcast. What are you watching? I'm watching Catch the Craze. What are you going to do? Subscribe now to Catch the Craze, the number one show online for independent. Have you subscribed to? You are an independent. Catch the Craze! Making moves on your own. Catch the Craze! On your grind in the streets. Catch the Craze! Join the movement. Catch the Craze! Tow. Ah. And oh, boom. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Yes, and a shout out to Sam who uh, did his first fan expo this weekend in Texas. Mm. You know, so he's uh, beginning to do all the uh, Texas comic book convention circuit since moving there. So congratulations, you seem to have done really, really well. So uh, yes, so all all the love, all the love from uh, here, <laughs> from over here on this side of the internet. So Ooh. welcome everybody to another episode of the Rage and Tooth of Vlogs show. And we're still kind of waking up and trying to get ourselves together here. We got a, <laughs> this, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still a little overwhelmed that we're already like two, uh, not even two weeks away from the end of the month. Like it just feels like I just did my to-do list for June yesterday. So, Oh boy. So welcome everybody to another episode. So who's in the chat today? The chat's already jumping. Who's in there? Oh, we lost you, Nita. Ah, I gotta oh. get back over to him. I had gone to oh. Brandon. Oh, there all right, you go. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Who, uh, so who's, who's joining us today? Uh, okay, well, because I bounced out, it came back, and guess what? I only see right now I can see Pops, Marvy, Bristolian oh. Dave, oh, Bristolian user, Dave. and Glenn Fleming. Oh, I know hello. Mike was in there, I know uh -huh. Kayla Jade was in there, and oh, I that's see all I see right now. Yeah, I see Frog G hopping in, I see Carl, I see Joe. Hello, well, then. yeah, okay, here it's we are. Party over here, yeah, exactly. We're trying to start off, we're all trying to wake up this Monday. Hello, Glenn. You know, yes, I'm. I'm uh, <laughs> on my to-do list today is to finish the cover for uh, your uh, Comics Unlimited magazine. I have the article finished, believe it or not. 
I just have to finish the cover, put all the artwork together, and I will send that uh, out to you for you to publish at Toyo Mushi Ray. So uh, welcome. And and yes, 13 people, mystery viewers watching Max. us as okay. well. Hello. There they go. Now the list comes up. All there right. we go. You know, there we go. So, uh, yeah. 13 people, oh, mystery watchers watching us. Come on over. Come on. It's a join, join me. I know you're shy out there, but uh, you, maybe you're shy because you don't know who we are. So let, let's get to the introduction. So hello, my name is Daphne Lage, and I am a cartoonist and illustrator. Oh, what else am I? I'm a comic book artist from New York. <laughs> it's Monday. Um, I have been self-publishing comics since 1992, so I kind of sort of know what I'm talking about. And I am known for the funny animal fantasy adventure, Tall Tales, uh, which is currently on Kickstarter. Uh, we broke 2,000 over the weekend. So happy with that. I haven't looked at the campaign yet because I tried to not drive myself crazy. So uh, I'm pretty sure we're still over 2,000. <laughs> so head on over to Kickstarter and support the book there. And I'm also known for my medieval fantasy soap opera drama, Ego Raven, Air of the First Unicorn, which is also on pre-launch on Kickstarter. Uh, that campaign goes live August 22nd, 2022. So make sure you sign up, you hit the pre-launch to get notified uh, whenever uh, the, the can when the campaign goes live in August. But it's all about Tall Tales right now. So uh, yeah, so in the meantime, you can read both my comics online at Tall Tales TV. EAILSonline.com and egoworks.com, E G O W R K S. And you can also check out all my videos on how I make my comics on YouTube at my channel at Daphne Lage, L A G E R, which is also simulcast through the Region 2 network. And yes, mystery viewers from regions beyond, come on over, come on over to the channel, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, get that notified uh, whenever any of our wonderful shows on the network goes live. And join our sexy people in the chat. We have the sexiest chat you can uh, you can join and talk to. I mean, it's like you know, it, it's like a whole other show going on over there. So, <laughs> so come on over and join us. And Nita, so tell the peoples who you are. Uh, my name is Nita Lanning. I am a writer, vlogger, blogger from Southeast Louisiana. I am CEO and executive producer of the Region 2 Broadcast Network. There you go. She's the boss lady. She's the boss lady, a uh, rap god <laughs> who runs the joint. So be nice to her or she'll kick you out, not allow you in the VIP area. <laughs> so so uh, before we get started, you said we have guests, special guests today, later on in, in the next half hour, uh, at, at the half hour mark. But let's get mm -hmm. a little housekeeping uh, done before uh, we, uh, I, I throw some little thoughtage out there before uh, we, we speak to our guests. So, so what do we have on the housekeeping uh, list there, Anita? Ah, yes, that's right. We have the Oswald Chronicles, If I Were a Few Inches Taller, the new series uh, from JD Calderon, who will be launching this Friday with us. Um, yeah, so yeah, so it's on pre launch now. So make sure that you click the notify me button so that uh, you get notified the second the campaign goes live. He has some nice goodies for uh, for the first uh, few people who pledge physical uh, to physical tiers on that first day. So uh, yeah, so make sure you don't miss out on anything. So yeah, like I said, this is the first, uh, this is another, uh, I think it's a four issue limited series. Uh, and this is for, I think, the first two issues. Uh, but we will definitely get more information this Friday. Links for are sure. all in the show notes. Yeah, sh links are all in the show notes. So hit that notify me button uh, so that. Oh, yes. And House of Bob already. I can't believe this. We already coming up to the last Saturday of the month which means another House of Bob light, uh, drawing night stream. It's where me and Nita have conversations about uh, topics uh, not quite appropriate for the for the morning crowd. While I draw artwork, that is definitely not appropriate <laughs> for the 
worn it. But we I'm haven't been banned yet. Exactly. They haven't stopped us yet. This will be what our fourth episode. Sure will be right now. Yes. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So if you want to know uh, what uh, these are like, uh, it's pretty much an adults only version of this show. Uh, you know, we're just talking, having a good time, chatting. This is the adults only version of the show. Right. Yeah, the adults only <laughs> version of the show. Yeah, we actually found some adults <laughs> <laughs> to be on the show. God forbid. Um, so yeah, so join us uh, this uh, Saturday night at 10 p.m. to midnight, where the topic of the episode will be our favorite uh, dirty comics that got us on this road. <laughs> to hell. Comics. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and speaking of comics, speaking of uh, fulfilling your campaigns, save 5% on your next Gemini mailer order with our coupon code RAGEN2. Get uh, get those uh, Gemini mailers. Send your your uh, comics out in style. And, and you know it's funny. It's like I keep hearing that for some reason Gemini mailers not quite being affected by the paper shortage. I keep hearing that people are having a hard time getting boxes and whatnot for for things, but not Gemini mailers. No, nope, so they're on their game. Like, <laughs> that's the sign so use our coupon code for that also if you want to ask us a question have a comment or if you want us if you have a topic you want us to talk about on the show email us at rageandabc at gmail.com uh where nita will sort out your questions and throw them back at us ourselves you know so that uh, we can answer we will we will you know try us try us <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, you know, see, uh, you know, who knows what we'll say? Who knows? <laughs> oh, my goodness. What what a weekend. What a weekend, Nita. Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, so so what what have you been up to this weekend? Uh, Just <laughs> cleaning, organizing the office. That's why everything's all in disarray. Um, I I've got a new HR back. Oh here. yes, yes, exactly. We have uh, we have filled the new HR. We have filled the HR our position. Um, her name is uh, Umbra. 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 Oh, very nice, very nice. Um, she's how old is she? Like ten weeks old. Ten weeks old. Completely, completely unqualified and perfect <laughs> for the position. <laughs> And I'm sure she'll be making noise in a little bit. So. Right, that's fine. Because because she, too, has memoirs to write. <laughs> you see, what it is, is that Dumplin' had passed on the book of Hamster, and now she has to fill in the next chapter. So, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Rattling. But, yeah, but, I mean, holy crap. It's like, I'm, I'm still looking at my list here of things I need to do, and it's like, holy crap. Like, uh, oh yeah, he's he's uh, he's there somewhere. He's there somewhere. He, he, PR, PR department. He he only he only chimes in when he has something important to say. So, yes. thank you. Um, so yeah, so I have yeah, I still have my list to go through, and uh, although uh, for everybody who is on my uh, commission list, uh, waiting list, um, I'm just gonna finish. I'm just finishing up a couple of things uh, soon. Uh, you know, for the end of this month, and I will be going through my commission wait list to get through. You know, everybody who says, you know, I'll call, just 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 call me when when you're ready. Call me when you're ready. It's like I'm I'm almost ready. I have my uh, sketch covers I have to color. I have Glenn's uh, stuff that I have to finish. I still have to color correct um, the Oswald and Eagle Raven short that uh, everyone is patient very patiently waiting for i do have to thank all of uh the people who support us on kickstarter you guys are the best you're very patient you understand uh what's going on here um and uh yeah i, I know right there's adults here since when <laughs> you know um so yeah just getting through this list um yeah, I, I know for really. It's like, yeah, that that's what I keep hearing. That's like, oh, if you want, you know, if, if you want to buy like regular boxes, you can't find them. Gemini mailers, it's like you're flooded. You you, you can get all the Gemini mailers. 
Well, my Jimmy, between you and Nita, um, where's your book? It's along with all the other books we're going to be mailing out hmm. to you in your giant boxes. So, yeah, definitely, uh, <laughs> we're filling your boxes up. Your 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 uh, your uh, um, subscription <laughs> thing that you get, Kickstarter subscription that you got. So yeah, that uh, that will be coming soon. I just have to finish up all the sketch covers and I'll be sending out everybody's uh, um, at packages. And I just want to say, Mike, Jimmy and Nita, you know, stay tuned for your sketch covers. Uh oh, You're going to have a good time. You're going to have a good time. Uh -oh. I, hope, I hope it makes the wait worth it. Let's just say that. Oh. Ah, yeah. So uh, also uh, for anybody, for everybody who's keeping, uh, keeping track today's, no, today's word count on the Eagle Raven novel is 41,752 words. I am, wow. It, it's like, ah, <laughs> I am like, oh yes, that's right. Cromcon is at next weekend as well. I mean, yeah, it's like, that's the thing. I mark my months now with House of Bob at Cromcon. <laughs> yeah, we've got a bump for that. It's coming up before right, our yeah. guests arrive. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So I, uh, speaking of bumps, um, <laughs> oh no, Jay. Yeah, I know it's, it's, well, no, it's like, so what time? Okay. So if it's 10 o'clock here, what time is it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, I, I mean, it's like, you, you can't get a more furry novel than that, isn't it? Coming soon. <laughs> Einstein approves. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. So I had reached another roadblock in uh, the uh, in the story, in the novel. And it was taking me. I was, like, ruminating on this for days. I could not get through this. Um, and I, I did. I did something. It's like, you know, you know, that whole thing, do the one thing that scares you. Oh my God, Jake, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, so I did the one thing that, that scared me when uh, it uh, came to the novel. I asked JD for advice. Uh -oh. <laughs> and um, I, cause I had to, I was just way too stuck. I was just way too stuck on, on this novel. And what it was, was that I have this scene that if I was doing it as a comic book, I could see it clearly. But it's a prose novel. So I'm sitting here trying to like, how do my words are gone, as, as Meredith, you know, would say. It's like, oh, where'd my words go? So it's like, okay, I, I have to go to writing Pope for this. <laughs> I, have to, I have to get a blessing. So, um... So I asked him about it. And, and honestly, I, it's like, look, I, I know, I don't know why a lot of us independent creators have this problem. We, we talked a little bit about it on, on Friday. It's like, why do we have such a problem really talking about our stuff? You know, I, I mean, it's, it, it's like, you know, we're doing these comics we're doing these books, but then it's like when it comes to like, even, you know, like, you know, like self-promotion or whatnot, it's like all of a sudden we kind of choke up at, at, at like needing to talk about our work. I mean, I mean, just me being able to talk this much about Eagle Raven just to talk about the Kickstarter is kind of like, it took me a bit to get just to that point. Like just saying her name out loud, that took me a while to do. Cause I had, there, there was like, I've been working on this, this, you know, this story, the whole Eagle Raven story since like the late nineties and only in the last two years have I been able to say it out loud, to say her name out loud. Like most of the time it's just, you know, it's just all in my head. Right. So this was like the next level of that because I had to explain a scene. I had to like put the entire scene in context for Jose to help me, which, you know, and it's like, oh shit. It's like, okay, so here's, you know, and I just like choked and it's like, holy crap. I have to say Eagle Raven's name out loud. I have to say Daniel's name out loud. And I have to say Loki's name out loud. And I have to explain the scenario out loud. <laughs> 
And it was just, it was just really, really hard for me to get to, but, but I needed an answer. So I had to fight through it. It's like, get over myself. I had to get over myself. And I had to talk about my work to JD in order, you know, for him to help me with this. And it was really funny as to like, I give him a little bit and then he starts, he starts throwing, um, yeah, no, it, honestly, I think that that has a lot to do with it. You know, it, it's like, it, it's that fear of just like immediately being told, why are you being stupid? Why, why, you know, that that's stupid. Why are you doing that? Right. But when I kind of like was reeling out, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right, right. when I was kind of reeling out the information, JD started asking me more questions and started, you know, putting you know, started like giving little tidbits of ideas. And I'm like, going, and the more he did that, the more I wanted to talk about the book, wanted to talk about the story. And, and then it's like, and, and then it's like within like, a, I don't know, a span of 20 minutes, I went for, they do, they do. Yeah, exactly. Fight. For, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so within the span of 20 minutes, it went from, oh my God, you're going to think my idea is stupid to let me talk about, I need to talk to you more about my work. <laughs> you know? So there was, so whatever fear that I had, um, just because he was actually thinking about sol helping me solve my problem. And he was coming up with all these scenarios and asking these questions. And I was just like, absolutely thrilled at that. And, um, and yeah, and, and I guess, I don't know, it, it's, it's like, so because of this conversation, I was able to finally kind of break through this, this wall that, that I was like, keeping me from, from going forward in the story. And I, I think, you know, I, I think it came out in a way that, that I, uh, that, that I want, that, that, that I like enough that I can continue past it now that I don't feel like I'm stuck anymore, but, uh, uh, definitely it kind of helped me overcome my future fear of having him read the story. So, uh, maybe, <laughs> So I'm still kind of like nervous about that, but, but yeah, but isn't that like kind of a drag? It, it's like, you get so used to like just saying something and people just immediately going, that's stupid. Oh yeah. You know, although technically if you ask Jose, it's like, that's, that's how the, the Oswald Chronicles happened. Cause he claims that I did that to him and that's oh, how no. I the Oswald Chronicles out of spite because we were walking and, and mind you, I do not remember this at all. You know, I don't remember that, you know, this conversation happening the way he says it does. Um, but this is the story he sticks with. And it's like, I, you know, and every time he says it, I feel like, you know, how in the cartoon, she turned into the, they, they turn into a giant heel, you know, it's like, I feel like such an asshole. I mean, it's like, you know, and you know, so I don't know if, if, if either of us are remembering it correctly, but, um, but yeah, but it's like when, when you're both on it, but yeah, we, we got, we got shit to, to overcome. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> I think we all do. I know. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, um, that, that's kind of, so, so that, so technically, um, uh, yeah, it, yeah, I know. And like I said, it's the story he keeps t saying, I keep telling him, Jacuz. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know i'm always doing that because it's like i like i said i don't remember the story like that but he claims i told him that's stupid and even me just saying it right now it's like god damn i'm such an asshole what the fuck <laughs> You know, the pressure of dreams. I know, for real, right? And here I am, absolutely terrified, <laughs> terrified that that's exactly what he's going to do to turn around and, and do to me. And it's like only to find out, there's like no, he's just going to actually give me advice like a normal person. <laughs> so, oh my goodness! So yeah, so I I learned a, I, I learned something this this week. <laughs> 
something this weekend. Um, but yeah, that when we're that when we're creating stuff, um, when we're doing our thing, uh, we really do kind of have to get over ourselves in order to push through those blocks. Um, and yeah, and do the scary thing sometimes. You know, it's like. You know, ask, it's like, yeah, is there a risk someone's going to say your shit's stupid? Always. You know, even, hmm. <laughs> apparently, you know, even me talking shit on, on this show right now. Um, but, uh, you know, but the thing is, though, it's like, if it wasn't for that conversation, um, you know, I, I don't think I would have been able, I, I wouldn't have gotten through the... Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree that I was more afraid. And I, and I think that that's a lot of it, too, that it's like that that we're kind of like, even though we're on this journey of creating our own books and creating our own stuff, that there's a certain thing in us that that we don't want to believe that we're doing it. I mean, if that makes any sense, it, it's like it's more. It, it, yeah, it really is. It's, it's like kind of like an us problem rather than an outside problem because in the end, you know, what does it matter if someone says your stuff is stupid? You know, in, in the end, it's like, what, what, what does that really say? Does that say more about them or you, you know, um, you know why it's like th this, uh, <laughs> you know, this, I know for sure that, that Marcus Aurelius had, uh, had, had commented on, uh, in in his meditations that it's like what is it about other people's opinions that we hold them above our own you know mm -hmm. um th that's the thing so it's like so even if you know even if he had said that's dumb would it have gutted me yeah but at the same time it's like would it have really made me decide okay i'm not going to do this anymore you know, I, I don't think it would have any more than me allegedly saying that the idea for Oswald was stupid didn't stop him from writing the Oswald Chronicles. In really? fact, claims it, it that's that was the catalyst because I had challenged him, you know, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Like I said, I still <laughs> I still debate this story. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so that's kind of, uh, th that, that was kind of the thing. Um, yeah, it is irrational. It is irrational. Like, like, what is it about ourselves that, uh, that, that we're afraid of that, that we're able, that, that we're able to tell a story that people care about, you know, that we're able to, to do something that entertains people that we enjoy doing, you know, it's like, is that what we're afraid of? You know, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, and, and it's kind of tough and, and, and it does get in the way because it's like, it, it's kind of funny how so many of us have this, um, th this thing, you know, th this thing about ourselves, you know, where it's like, we're very self-conscious and this imposter syndrome. It's like, oh, people don't really like us. They're, we're, they're just faking it for us or whatnot. And, and, you know, which, which, yeah, it's all irrational. But in the end, it's like, does it really stop you from what you're doing? I mean, granted, there are people who it does stop. Um, can't save them all, I guess, you know. But I mean, but for the rest of us, we're obviously doing it. You know, I'm doing it. Joe's doing it. Mike Jimmy's doing it. You know, John Celestri's doing it. We're all making Jimmy's our copies. still doing it. Exactly. We're all, you know, Jake is doing it, you know. Yeah, you know, it, it's like because it's like the fact, yeah, it really is. You know, the fact that we're still doing it, what are they doing? The people saying that, that it's okay, you, all right, you said it's stupid. That's fine, but I'm still over here doing it. You know, right. so it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, you know, in the end, right? It, it's like that's that's kind of that, that's what it boils down to. Um, so yeah, so. So yeah, so everybody, um, fight your fears, you know, face your fears. Um, it's okay to look stupid, you know, I guess, you know, because it's the only way we can get over um, that hump 
and and push forward. Like I said, I I risk I risk hearing that stupid because I was more desperate to solve a problem than you know. So and it worked, you know. So you know. So so I, I, that that's that's the message for today. You know that uh, yeah, get, get over yourself. <laughs> Get over yourself and get your goddamn work done. <laughs> Just do it. Nobody else is doing it but you. Do it. you know? Exactly. So we're just hitting the half hour mark. Uh, we have our guest in the uh, in the green room waiting for, waiting to come on. So why don't we hit show some love, and uh, yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> Infamous gunslinger Desmond Gibbons, better known across the Wild West as the Cactus Kid, comes to the sleepy town of Clarkson. Trouble finds him in the unlikeliest of sources, the Sheriff. After their conflict, the Cactus Kid finds himself inexplicably wearing the badge of a lawman. Later, while on the trail of a serial killer, he and his deputy run afoul of a powerful druid, and the events that lead to the Cactus Kid's transformation into the hulking, four-armed projectile reptile are even more than the druid bargained for. From the Wild West to current-day Los Angeles, where he meets superheroes Black Eagle and Red Hawk, and forms an uneasy alliance with the stunning but deadly Kitty Hawk. Join the projectile reptile on a journey of gunslinging druidic magic, superheroes, and artifacts. Projectile Reptile from Dojo Kun Comics, only on Indiegogo. Are you ready for the truly Wild West? <laughs> That will wake you up every you know, time. time. Really, it really does. So, so welcome, Mr. Dan, to our humble abode. We vacuumed. We we uh, used the HEPA filter on it. So, <laughs> you know, so hopefully, uh, it's it's all nice and comfortable for you. So, welcome to our show. Uh, so, why don't you tell the people uh, who you are? Uh, okay, uh, Mike, check. Do you guys hear me? First of all, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, my name is Dan Evans. I uh, am creating a comic universe with my friend Josh Adams. I write it. He draws it. We've uh, been on this for about 10 years now, but have finally been able to get it off the ground because, you know, life happens. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like, just like we were talking about before, it's like, you know, you're just, just pushing forward no matter, you know, what gets thrown at you, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, yeah, so... So you work for uh, Legacy Comics, correct? That's our publisher right. who yeah. we signed with. Yeah, and um, what the, and what is the book that uh, you're you're working on right now? The first book is called Apollyon Twenty XX. We have the uh, issue zero completed, and uh, it's up for pre order right now. The volume one, which will be 150 plus pages, is out spring 2023. And then we have another book called Biofile Colga, which will be out in the fall of next year. Uh-huh. And you just recently, well, I know that there was a Kickstarter that you that you recently did. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Patrick Hickey Jr., the uh, co-founder and owner of Legacy Comics, he did that uh, with four or five of the titles before we joined. And actually, I think it sold out or met its goal in like four hours, something ridiculous like that. So these dudes have been grinding really hard, and we happened to catch on at a really good time because uh, the artist, Josh Adams, is friends with another podcaster that Patrick was, they were on together, and they just met, and, you know, two plus two equaled four, and here we are. Right, and so this is the the book on the screen that, uh, that you are uh, working on. Correct. Right. And are you going to do a separate campaign for this or? Well, we're hope, hope, hoping we don't have to do a campaign at all. Our, oh. our goal, yeah, our goal is to, we, we have some 
things in the works that I can't, I'm not privy to talk mm -hmm. about, that basically we've got money coming in. So our publisher legacy is able to preemptively purchase and then we can distribute without having to raise funds. And that's how we'd like to keep it so we don't have to. The biggest thing we want is to, we don't ever want to put anything online for people to buy that they have to wait for. Ah, okay. So the thing is, uh, but uh, this is a pre-order. Yes. Now, okay, is the book done and yes. you're just raising the funds to, to print? Well, not even raising the funds. Like it's, we're just seeing how, who could pre-order it, just put it oh. up there. Yeah, it's, it's going to print. It's going to go out anyway. We just thought it would be fun to announce it for a month, build it up because no one right. knows who we are. Right. Okay. Well, the thing is, though, I was looking at your first Kickstarter, and honestly, for a bunch of guys who nobody's heard of, you did really well on your first campaign out the gate. Yeah, and well, again, I can't take credit for that. That was all Patrick and his crew, and we kind of jumped on board uh, and rode right. their wave. <laughs> oh, there you go. I mean, that that's what it is, right? Yeah, we're just so hit the leech. We're just hit the leech. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were here to collaborate. So that's yeah, collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about uh, tell us about your comic. Okay, well, um, the biggest thing is that it is part of a massive universe called the Godfo universe, which spans millennia, and this is kind of the entry point at the beginning of the time era that leads to bigger things. So, long story short, a new an alien metal has landed on Earth, a new element called Impira Metal, which basically can bond with anything, and that's kind of what you see happening to that guy's face right there. Well, a group of uh, powerful shadow government elites have taken it and used it to create most of the inventions we have in the 20th century, and in this era, the 21st century, a, a near future from where we are now, um, they are trying to make a god machine, basically a machine that can control and influence the minds of every single person on the planet, but they need a human host. And what you have is the prime candidate running amok. He doesn't want to be a part of it. And he joins forces with some other guys that were chosen. And they are leading a revolution against this. So is there uh, any examples of interior artwork that uh, we can look at on the website? or Not on, the, web, just... not on the website. Oh, uh, there we just, go. Okay. Yeah, the, the three pages I ah. sent in the email. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is... And this is why I'm God. Right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I, I just get to play chief ass Joe Rogan right now. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm the writer. I totally get that. I don't do right. any work. <laughs> so, you know, so what is uh, your background? Because um, when I was looking at the website and looking at the team, I mean, there's a lot of big brain people wanting to do comics. So, so what, uh, so what's your background uh, that, that, that brought you here. <laughs> um, well, Josh and I are both musicians. We played in different bands growing up, and I started a band called Blue Bolt, and we wanted kind of like this big kind of rush, Coheed and Cambria, Blue Oyster Cult story to go with all the big progressive music. Uh -huh. So I started creating the Godfo universe, and me and Josh spitballed for 10 years, and he's a fantastic artist, as you can see from the work. And one thing led to another, and life gradually get better and worse <laughs> yeah well yeah that's that's a given no matter yeah. what <laughs> and then we're you know, eventually reach an age where you're like you know what i'm just gonna do it who cares and yeah. that's what i liked about uh, y'all's conversation earlier huh? was i mean who cares anymore right <laughs> yeah no <laughs> really it. yeah exactly you know it's like it's like what you're, you're gonna wait you're gonna wait for approval from who people who aren't <laughs> doing anything you know it was the raging hashtag fuck them <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There's so always, yeah, there's always somebody who can't. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a quote I think in one of our works too. It's like those who can't do undo. Yeah, they tr they really they they really do. You know, it, it's like even if they see you doing it, it's like it's not enough to just leave you alone. They have to kind of like needle at you to to get you to stop. But that, yeah, the next the next phase is to monetize those people. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Make uh, monetize the haters. Yeah. <laughs> So what is like like so so what is your background in comics that like what it's like you're musicians but now you want to do comics like where does that bridge come from? My background in comics 
comes from failing as an artist at like age seven when I couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler. <laughs> so I Aww. switched. So I switched to writing. Um, I've always written a ton of stuff. Like we we have massive output. Like we got a novel in this universe that's done, and it's just you think. You know, when you're outside of it, you think comic a comic would be easier because you don't have to write yeah, yeah. pages of prose. But then it's like, oh man, you got to draw this and articulate faces and all this kind of stuff. But it was, you know, mainly just finding the right people. I'd always been trying to find artists my whole life to do something like this, and you find someone who doesn't suck, who's not going to steal from you, who's right. not a not a jerk to be around, and then you hold on to them. I mean. Right. It's cheesy as that sounds. Right, no, for real. No, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, yeah. We, we definitely get it, you know. Um the, but the thing it's so so what comics did you grow up with? Like did the the artwork that's that's the parrot everyone's that's PR <laughs> chiming in. Um so like because obviously this book like usually when we see people come into comics, it's like they always want to look like as much as like Marvel or DC as as much as possible. Like, like they really know why like anybody that. would want to look like them now. Thank well, you. Right. You know exactly. So so what kind of led you to this type of style to have your books? I mean that seems to be the case with all the books from Legacy, where mm -hmm. they're very stylistically different. Then, uh, like they, they come yeah. off more like like underground almost. Well, hey, hey, I can I can answer some of that. I can answer one hundred percent for myself and some for Josh because we talk every day. Um, we grew up, of course, we're about in our we're mid to late thirties, so we remember Image being something cool, <laughs> even if the writing wasn't necessarily great. Yeah. At least the art was. But the biggest thing, especially um, the McFarlane era of, of Spider-Man and Spawn, is that dude did not care about borders. Right, yeah. And, again, sometimes his writing wasn't concrete, but at least the art could reflect that and be really cool and expressive. The biggest influences for us are that image idea with the early 90s, late 80s manga mm articulation like akira i mean when we both yeah. read our akira as kid it blew our mind that somebody yeah. could make cables of jumbles of cables look cool yeah exactly <laughs> right? yeah, yeah exactly and uh i am a huge matt wagner grendel fan so that's where i approach ah, him as far right. as writing goes it's like that dude would write basically a, a play or a novel and just put images to it but josh um I mean, we, we we grew up on the classics like Chris Claremont and you know Frank Miller, all those dudes, all the ones that all the ones they still have to pay licenses to for the movies. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> nobody buys the other stuff. But we really in music, you, you know, you spend. That's where we both come from. Like predominantly music, you spend so much time learning your influences so you can do what you want to do not so yeah. you can be like them and that's right yeah we don't have we don't hold contempt for but like you were saying even in the indie scene a lot of guys are trying to basically redo image mm -hmm. and it's like man if you're not mcfarland you're not mcfarland thank you <laughs> thank you yeah <laughs> there's already said, a mcfarland and nobody's jim lee so yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so that's so it's always i always appreciate people who kind of like because to me that kind of shows that they're committed to the medium yeah you know it, it's like that's like okay you want to do comics you're not trying to do product yeah you know because you want it to look you know a certain you know a, a very specific way in the hopes that it kind of goes over you know well we could we could have put a near topless chick on the cover but we didn't want to do that. <laughs> I'm sure it would have sold a lot quicker, but right. Oh, that's that. Okay, so so you're you've definitely been paying attention to everything that's going on. Yeah, we and we have no qualms with anybody wanting to make right. money or make their art, yeah. whatever. We stay out. I'm gonna be honest. We stay out of the drama. Especially right. I saw yeah. what oh, happened yeah. this yeah. week between mm -hmm. EVS and the iconic. I don't care. Right. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I was I was born and raised in the South. We don't care about anything until guns are involved. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's a good uh, yeah. yeah that that's a that, you can that's, talk, yeah, that's, you can a, talk that's a good line to cross that's there pretty, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> word, words are pretty much meaningless <laughs> right yeah that's that's an excellent line in the sand yeah it's like the second there's a gun involved it's like okay yeah now it's serious <laughs> <laughs> I am I, I am amazed personally that grown men get into 
to Twitter drama. Like, I mean, we've yeah. all we've all trolled people on Twitter. We've all it's fun. Yeah. It's outrage is hilarious, you know. But, but not it's, it's comic books for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like yeah, it's like usually it's like I, I try to stay off of Twitter as much as I can. Yeah. Um, because yeah, because even though it's kind of like we needed to self promote, you know, this yeah. whole thing about being able to talk about ourselves or whatnot. But you have to know how to curate your experience so that you're avoiding a lot of the drama so that you can promote, right? And then also just to be able to avoid the chicken cutlets that <laughs> the second I see, it's like, I'm, I'm about ready to stroke out, you know? <laughs> like, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't, sometimes I don't know what's going on with that place. <laughs> you know? so, right. <laughs> Yeah, no, but that's, you know, yeah, but that's, uh, that's the thing. So, so, okay, so you're, you're from music, writer, mm -hmm. doing comics. Is, is there, a, now you said that you also did a prose, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, like a prose continuation or a prose addition to your comic. Yeah. So what made you do that? If I don't, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go super serious. Uh -huh. real down and then back up. So I'm, okay. I'm going to land it. Okay. So I apologize to the viewers. I got to go to this dark place and then <laughs> come back out. Um, I've always been super creative, whether that's art is good or bad. It doesn't matter. I have to output and I consume all the time, not like in a Disney plus consume. I'm always, right. whatever inspires me, I bring in. Right. Synthesize, Very good distinction, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference between consuming yeah. to make art and being a consumer. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm 35. Um, during COVID, two years ago, I had my brother, who was 40, we were pretty much the same person. Like, we had the same tone of voice, everything. You could have thought we were twins. Right. He took his own life two years ago. It was a long time coming. That doesn't make it any easier. Right, yeah. But after that, I decided that's not going to happen to me. I have a wife and a child. He didn't. And that's not, uh, not going to happen. I'm not going to let that happen. And the main way to do that is to not go crazy by not doing what I want to do artistically. Because right. if I don't, it stays up there. You get crazy. You become a bad husband. You become a bad father. And you can become a bad person. Right. And um, so I was like, you know what? Uh, excuse the language, but fuck it, I'm going to make stuff. Um, and so I sat down, started getting up at four in the morning and finished the novel, finished all this. We, we wrote this, which is the when the volume one that comes out will be called Live Not By Lies. It is equivalent equivalent of six big issues, so it's going to be over 150 pages. We wrote Biofile Colga, which is going to be 12 issues, which is a ridiculous amount of pages. Huh. And Josh draws at an amazing speed. And we don't plan to stop. Yeah. So I get up, do everything I can, because the world's full of crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and it needs less crap. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah, both in, yeah, I guess like in attitude, in art, and it just, it's like, I, I really do think that, that creative people had kind of like an advantage in the past two years yeah. because I, you know, I've, I've spoken with a lot of artists and we all seem to say the same thing. We actually blossomed in the last two years. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually were at our busiest in the last two years. I mean, not to, not to diminish what anything that happened, you know, that, oh, yeah. that's been happening and still happening or whatnot, you know, um, we lost a lot of good people because of it, but, oh, yeah. um, but the thing is though, it was the complete opposite to us. You know, it's like, I started working on my, I, I don't think I've, I've worked on so much comic book work in, in the past 30 something years that I've been at this than in that 12, in that, that two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never worked so hard at comics you know, except in that time. I mean, even now I'm just trying to keep up that momentum. And yeah, it's just funny to hear, you know, you say this kind of the same thing that it's like, it's it's like create or die, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, and, and and we weirdly ended up with the opportunity 
to really bring all that forward. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I'm uh, I, I'm digressing a bit. But uh, well, so, it's my fault for de- 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 <laughs> <laughs> You know, so did you find now the thing is though, so did you so you wrote the novel because you just had so much stuff to come that, that had to come out of your head? Um mm-hmm. uh, that what well, that it wasn't possible to do as a comic or it's just just another piece of the story. Well, I'll, let me explain the uh, the universe a little bit. So our goal when creating all of this was tell a story that is millennia long that is broken into eras. Kind of like a remember how Star Wars would retcon things, be like, oh, this is yeah. the the what was not crap was like the, oh. high, the High Order, nice the Old Republic, right? The yeah, Republic. it's like nobody, I, I nobody forgot cares they, about the High Republic. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the, all the legacy yeah. stuff that yeah. Disney ended up erasing. So, yeah, yeah, all the stuff that Kathleen Kennedy said they didn't have to go. Right. With. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but we we wanted to break it into eras, so basically we can tell all kinds of different stories, and we can tell all these different entry points. So our goal is that anyone can jump in anywhere and understand what's going right. on. And if they want to be a part of something bigger, they can be. So the novel actually takes place in what's called the Black Star era, which takes place at the end of the Godfo universe. This, Apollyon 20XX, takes place at the beginning. You can enjoy both of them. And if you want the bigger overarching scope, you can buy both of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Yeah. But, but, so which do you prefer working in prose or, or like comics because oh comics <laughs> it's, it's wow oh um, for my end it's so much easier like <laughs> at least if i can get them i just uh because i i get up and i draw my crappy little uh stick figures here oh you you do that <laughs> yeah, okay that, that i send to josh to make oh good. that's funny that's funny <laughs> so i can i can pump out like a 20 oh, hold on show yeah. that show that again and we'll uh, show, show me the so look at that. So, so there you go, everybody. You have no excuse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make it layout. Yeah, there you go. Well, I, so I do that, uh-huh. and um, it takes maybe you know a few hours to put out a twenty-four right. page issue, uh-huh. and then I send it to Josh. He makes it pretty. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> just then, he, he just adds a little touch here. And there. Yeah. He just, <laughs> he just throws it in MS Paint and hits fill. <laughs> So we do that, and I'll, I'll write, I'll type up the entire script. Now I type up the entire script to Legacy's uh, mm-hmm. editing preference okay. so that Patrick can go through if he wants to edit anything right. and uh, get it out. And that's so much easier because it took me like eight years to write that novel. <laughs> right. Real, but the thing is, though, because it's like, because right now it's like I'm kind of in the opposite thing where I, I've been doing comics and I'm writing my first, well, my first real novel right yeah. now. Um, I've dabbled in prose before and I'm kind of finding, well, you know, it's not that I'm finding prose harder. I mean, it's its own different animal. Yeah. Um, but I just really enjoy being able to get through a story faster in prose than I could have as a comic, mostly because I'm I'm doing everything and I'm drawing and I'm you uh, know there you so, go. <laughs> yeah so I'm so yeah so technically for me it's the opposite prose is technically faster. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm envious of anyone right. who can who can draw so more power to you. <laughs> Thank you. You get my respect. <laughs> so what's so now the thing is though is there like are you thinking of like kind of incorporating like your music into this as well, you know, kind of yeah. like doing a whole. All of the albums are with are or within the story. Oh, and okay. actually, anyone who pre-orders this issue, this right. uh, Ashcan, gets a free song from us that we're releasing the next. Oh, month. so there, so you're you're doing the whole multimedia yeah. thing. I mean, because it, it makes sense. You you do the music, so mm-hmm. might as well incorporate it somehow, right? Oh yeah, it's gonna be uh, crossing. Right. <laughs> so is it okay so you say that you like doing um the like writing for comics uh better but it's like is there something that prose offers that that you keep going back to it total control mm. <laughs> that's i can it, it's a pain in the butt to be like all right instead of getting josh to draw this guy i've got to spend you know 20 minutes describing him 
but then I can determine what happens in the story. And right. Josh actually helps me edit because he's also a writer. He's written some fantastic horror short films. Right. Or not films, I'm sorry, short stories. He did, I think, actually did write a film script once. But So he'll go back through and help me edit things. Uh. <laughs> But I love being able to not have to, you got to be a little selfish as an artist and you got to right, have that yeah. one thing that you have total control over. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's why yeah. I'm tired all the time. <laughs> every, every artist wants to be a little God and I get that. Yeah. That, that's fine. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think, well, in our case, I don't think it's, we want to, it's just that we have to a necessity. <laughs> You want to yeah. put somebody on Fiverr to draw you something? No, nah, you know, yeah, I think I'll, I'll kind of pass on that. It took me a while just to get somebody to flat my stuff so I can color on top of it better, but uh, faster. <laughs> but it, it takes me a while. Yeah, you know what? You're right, though. We, we all want to be our little, our own little gods. You know, I, I'm yeah. too, uh, now that I think about it, it's like, nah, I, I'm too much into that control, you know. Although, speaking of control, those layouts. So did you always mean to do your own layouts for um for the comics or like you just ha i don't want to say you don't trust the artist to interpret your uh your no, that's, script that's not it it's a, yeah. I've, I've looked up you know i've searched how to write comics right <laughs> and I'll, I'll say this i saw like some comic pros post their uh, like how they write them and it looks so pretentious it's like okay. jim enters the building he is wearing this, he's this. <laughs> right. and i'm like man i'm not doing that like that is that would be more of an insult to an artist than me drawing right. crappy stick figures and being right. like hey make it good right. <laughs> so, no josh has 100 percent control like vetoing power over uh -huh. how everything looks because i send stick figures and he sends you know right. <laughs> professional work so we have a really great relationship in that we we insult each other 24 7 and nobody cares we that's the we best kind of relationship yeah. he's also he's also bigger than me so that helps oh wow well, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um he, we just we just trust each other I mean, that, that okay. came from talking every day for 10 years about this one idea and no just no egos it's the same thing right. like with with a band it takes eight to ten years to find people who don't yeah. suck and you have to be the one that doesn't suck the most <laughs> oh yeah absolutely you know yeah you have to be the example to everybody yeah and that means so, eating a bunch of humble pie every day mm -hmm. it's being the one that fails the loudest right well you know that's <laughs> yeah exactly it, it's um yeah we have we have to understand what our limitations are and 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 yeah and and admit that there are people who might be better at us it, <laughs> than us yeah. at doing certain things are there uh times where you send layouts to him and you and he says you know what i'm gonna change this up i oh, think yeah. this should be something else oh yeah all the time or uh. even better and it's devious but it works is he'll just do it and send uh. <laughs> he's like it's like what are you gonna do dan are you gonna draw it right yeah exactly <laughs> I like, dare you, here, I dare you. You go. here you go. Feel free to draw it. Oh, that's funny. So, so in the end, it's like you're not like a stickler like Alan Moore, no, or it's no, like, no, you know, no. he's literally drawing out the comic for them or whatever he does. And it's like you have to follow. Right. There's a lot right. of things Alan Moore can do that nobody else can do. And that's, that's grow a beard that length. And yeah. Sit around and tell people how to do things they can't do that you were very lucky to do. And write a book like a, what right. was it, 800 page book called Jerusalem that nobody right. read. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and more power to I'm sure it's fantastic. But I'm not reading it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it. We yeah. can't be Alan Moore. Alan Moore is very lucky to be Alan Moore because any other time in history, he'd have been some. He'd have been like Nietzsche screaming, right, exactly. screaming from a mountain, and nobody would be like, ah, okay, right. And, and then, right, and then it's like you know everybody randomly quotes him, but it's yeah, like, but nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> They're not paying that guy. Right. But that's you know, but I guess also in the end, it's like as a you know as a thing to everybody that it's like, um, you know, yes, it's like what we do has rules. Yeah. But. They're really all just, you know, suggestions, really. <laughs> you know, there's nothing really hard and fast about what, uh, about like how we do things, how we create. Um, we just have to do everything in the service of the story. And if it, yeah. and if it serve, if it benefits the story, then you're doing it the right way, pretty much. Oh, yeah. and, it, and it's, there's kind of two sides to every art form. Cause then I thought about this a lot cause I went, I went to school for music and, met all kinds of different people and it's you've got you know creative chaos and you've got you know uh, technical order 
-hmm. and you have people that can excel in those things like some people that can draw perfectly I guess what you would call perfectly but there's nothing creative about it right and then you have people that can sit there all day and come up with brilliant concepts but their doodles look terrible you know right and you've got to know your weaknesses because very few people can do both of those things right yeah. very 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 few people I can't right off the top of my head think of people that can write and draw amazingly mm -hmm. like 10 out of 10 you know right yeah yeah and usually your, your concentration is either one or the other mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you get somebody that does like five and five, and that's kind of cool. And I think that's where a lot of '90s comics came right. from. But I, I say all that to say, man, it's just like <laughs> this guy says more like guidelines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. But no, like, what bothers me, what bothers me about comics, the same thing that bothers me about music, is you have a lot of people that are technically great, but the ideas seem really bankrupt, right. and it's just. Because you always find like a YouTube musician, like somebody that can do covers perfectly, right, yeah. but but I mean, Prince. Right. Prince is an example that could do both. <laughs> yeah, well, he could do it. He could do it all. I mean, yeah. I think he, like he, he could learned draw how to better do... than most people too. Yeah, he probably could. Yeah. But no, it's. I think that that's the. It's it's so much fun. Like you were saying about guidelines to to take something and shake it up, and that's what comics, need, especially indie comics, if they're gonna survive. Yeah. We need that dynamism. Yeah. It can't get stagnant because it was a couple of years ago. You had these guys that were. And they were ex pros and they're fantastic. They're great artists. Yeah. And they rose to the top. And you have some that are coming up. But man, you've got to have consistent dynamism. Yeah. As soon as it turns cynical, as soon as it turns yeah. to money and product, like you were saying, yeah. it's going to crash and burn because it can't compete with DC and Marvel on those levels. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. they're you know, already not... cynical millionaires. <laughs> right. Exactly. And it's like, look, not everybody is going to get the Netflix deal. And and even then, what you're what, what you're really getting is the right to get canceled after the first season. <laughs> can I, can I, I want to run with that. I can, I can now go to the store and pick out the comics that are Netflix pitches. Yeah, because <laughs> they have yeah. really, they have really that's, long titles and really dull art, yeah. and they're all urban no, fantasy. No, that, that's that's a game. That that's the game, right? It's like okay, which one is a screenplay writer trying yep. to sell his stuff in Hollywood, right? <laughs> it's always like it's always something like some obscure right. quote that's passed off as the title, like like stare into the abyss or something right, like that. Right, yeah. Like they're yeah, it's like yeah, it, it's it's really it, it's it's a it's a genre in and of itself at this point. Well, it's it, like it, oh it, these the screenplays. It's, it's the um it's the it's the the supernatural romance of this yeah. era. It's the twilight of this right. era. Right. Well you know what there, there's room for everything. There, there there's Unfortunately, room for everything. There is. You know it's like, <laughs> you know it's like uh, you know in and of itself these weird little genres are fine, yeah. but it's when it's when the whole commerce thing takes over and then everybody feels the pressure of, oh, I have to do it exactly like this yeah. if I want to sell my IP. And then it just becomes a different then. It, yeah, it's not about the art anymore. It's not about telling the story anymore. It's about selling an IP. And that is not why. <laughs> We got into this. <laughs> well, yeah, if, you, if you're already, if right. you're creating something with the intent to get rid of it, you don't care yeah. about it. Right. I mean, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're not. You're it, not having a child. You're raising chickens. Yeah. yeah. It's not a passion project. <laughs> right. Exactly. If oh, your it's passion harder. project, it's a passion project. Oh, oh here, it's thirty-five thousand oh, dollars. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah really. The second your passion project has a price tag on it, it's mm -hmm. no longer a passion project. <laughs> so Disney can yeah. buy it and crash it. And right. Years. Exactly. Because right. You know, it needs to be mashed into a gray paste. You know. So. Uh, and I've got to so, give uh, Nita. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. All right, I gotta give you credit. I'm reading. I'm trying to see your screen. Like you've got the Max back there. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Sam oh, Keith. Yeah, was that uh, Sand, <laughs> Sandman beside it? Yeah, Sandman and, and then the rest. Secret are... of Nim, which yeah. that, which I can tell you had a fucked up childhood. <laughs> oh, it was a total <laughs> well, well, you have to have, have, well, have, have watership down next <laughs> yeah. to that. Sit <laughs> down there. Yeah, how many there how go. many dead rabbits have you seen? <laughs> right, exactly. Why? Yeah. Yeah, it's not not to throw story. a wrench in the conversation. But oh I no, not live in Louisiana. Yeah. Right. The Mac, the Max blew my mind as a kid. I mean, I didn't get Me all too. the the dark undertones, of course, until later. But right, that and, uh, ant, I forgot the creator of that. Uh, he was like a cool ex-con, and he made a comic called Ant. It was like a girl that was dressed like an ant, and it was like <laughs> oh. super sexy and super dangerous. I have like issue one here somewhere, but uh, you know, those, it sounds, those it two. It sounds kind of familiar, but yeah. yeah, but we see, but that's that's what we're talking about. It's like, you know, these comics that, that are so left field that we remember them forever, you know? Right. Well, punk yeah. rock, 
punk rock is the new establishment, so we need something other than punk. And that's right, exactly. That's the we problem need, is, we is need comics in, are, indie comics, yeah. Yeah, because comics have become the mainstream crap. And I don't, I, I'm trying to put it in music terms because it's what I understand, but you know, uh -huh. like metal. Yeah. Metal has got a billion different genres, and some of them are trash, but they are always reinventing. Yeah. And it's always underground because Rolling Stone's never going to give metal bands like good praise. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, and that's the whole thing is like that's what comics right. need to be. Comics need to be like a middle finger in the face of the yeah. Uh, the Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. But some yeah. people try to be. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know. So, so why don't you tell everybody uh, where they can find you and your book? Um, and uh, yeah, because we're just hitting the top of the hour. So, okay. uh, yeah. So tell everybody where they can find you and get your stuff. Although we will put links in the yeah, show it will be in the show notes. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're on Instagram and Twitter. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's right. Like, well, yeah. you know, it's Twitter's like, an evil it's, necessity. It is. Twitter, it is. I'm a Twitter whore. And this man. is at Legacy be. Comics with an X. Right. Yeah. yeah. Legacy Comics with an X dot com is where you can pre-order uh, Apollyon twenty XX issue one. It's an ash can. It's uh, six pages, but there's six really good pages. We made sure of that. It's hundred percent done as everything. We're trying to not have to crowdfund anything, so you guys get it directly. It will be in um, what is it? A Gemini mailer. So the shipping is what it should be, so people get good quality mailing. But we are on Instagram. We are at Godfo underscore Universe, and the same thing for Twitter at Godfo underscore Universe. And I got I'm gonna promote some other stuff real quick if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Everyone who pre-orders gets a uh, ten uh, unlettered free pages of Volume One that's coming out. That's Live Not by Lies of Apollyon Twenty XX. They get a free song from my band. It's Ooh. good. It doesn't suck. And we've got a lot of other goodies that we're putting out. We're going to add everyone who orders to a mailing list. And we want that mailing list to be the best thing you get every week. We want to, I mean, I, I'm not trying to chill so much here, but we have been working on this for 10 years. We have tons Say it of with stuff. the chest. Say yeah. it with the chest. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we've got all of this stuff we're trying to give you guys. Like I've written something called the Apocrypha, which is called Apollyon 26. The Apocrypha is 77 pages. It's images, art, and uh, and short stories all together that we're going to give you people. We want to continually entertain and bring everyone into this massive world for as long as we can. We've got stuff for the next, for, for decades planned out. There you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> so I want to thank uh, Dan for, for coming to our show. I want to thank everybody in the chat for uh, keeping it hopping. Oh, yeah. um, the nut, thank yeah, you. Sexy. Yeah, and, and the nine mystery people who are still watching us after, you know, <laughs> a, a, after uh, all this time. So thank you for, uh, for joining us. So, uh, so yeah, so on, so, so there we have it. So like I said, all the uh, links will be in the uh, the show notes. So you can check out his book and the rest of uh, Legacy Comics, uh, a really interesting company out of Brooklyn. Um, so <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's like we could have a conversation just on why you guys are trying to function outside or how you're trying to function outside of Kickstarter. But, you know, that just means we just get, we just get to bring you back. So <laughs> I appreciate yes. it. So on that note, uh, if you want to know more about uh, my work and uh, all the comics that I'm doing, you can head on over to my main portfolio site at egoworks.com, E-G-O-W-R-K-S, where you can find links to all of my galleries and social media sites. But I mostly post to Facebook where you can see sketches and work in progress and updates. Uh, and also, don't forget that I have two books on Kickstarter right now with Tall Tales. Uh, uh, the campaign is live now and Eagle Raven on pre-launch and don't forget that i also have all my videos uh, on my own channel at daphne lage l-a-g-e art that streams through the raging 2 uh, network so remember to to subscribe like share all the like stuff you. that the algorithm gods require so that we you know everybody can see our stuff you so. are so much better at promotion i was thrown up trying to say all that. <laughs> Well, it's practice, man. It's practice. It's like I was saying at the very beginning. I couldn't even say my own character's name. <laughs> so. And I, I want to. I'm just. I'm not trying to hold on the time. No. But I got your LinkedIn request. I don't have LinkedIn, so I want to apologize for not accepting. <laughs> what the no. LinkedIn? No. Yeah, I think he, somebody sent me a LinkedIn request from you guys. Oh, it's probably I don't know. me. 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There, there we go. go. Then. I'm, well, I'm exploring well, well, then I apologize to for you more then. promotion. Well, that, that's okay. I I really suck at friend requests on Facebook. So I have people like just been, sitting there. You're still poking <laughs> people? Yeah, no, I know, really. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really horrible at it. It's like, but the thing is, though, if, if you... You don't. Nobody needs to wait to get on. You know, wait for a friend request from me. Just follow my feed. Everything on there is public, so you don't have to worry about that. So, Nina, yo, tell everybody who you are. Uh, uh, well, they they know who I am. Anyway, I uh, just remind them because you know it's well, been an hour. <laughs> okay. Well, my name is Nina Lanning. You can find me on Facebook as Nina Lanning. You can find me all over Twitter under the Raging Banners at c underscore chaos two four seven. There you and, go. So there we go. So uh, we're at the end of another show. Again, I'd like to thank uh, Dan for, for coming on. And uh, yeah, and you can catch us again on Friday uh, at another episode of the Raging 2 Network, where probably uh, another we incoherent will be launching no, oh, oh, Friday. Right. Not this Friday. No incoherent rants. We will be launching the Oswald Chronicles uh, if I were a few inches taller. Uh, you know, because that's that's how I am on Monday. Look, it, it's like, look, this is this is what I I have to have in front of me, or else I do not know what day it is. And don't uh, forget, 11 p.m. to midnight, sexy fun time on Saturday. Oh yeah, that's nice. true. Actually, yeah, it's like 10 p.m. 10 p.m. to midnight. It's a two hour day. Although Nita is a, in a, has a time zone issue. <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah, that's I'll right. That up. Yeah, All right. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Look, everything's the show. Tell notes. people what to do, Daphne. Tell right. Them okay. So at the end, things. at the end of this, at the end of this, you know, all I can, although you know, uh, you know, hashtag, you know, create or die is just pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's so, uh, right. so I remember everybody: eat your food, moisturize, mind your business, and do the work. Because when you do the work, you never have to fake your accomplishments. So on that note, we will see you next time. We are out of here. <laughs>